position. Starting at quarterback for the Wildcats is number 10, Ronald Veal. He's 25 to 65 for 350 yards, has yet to throw a TD pass, has been picked off twice. This is his third start in a row since Bobby Waters hurt his shoulder, but Bobby is available if head coach Dick Tomey should need him. They start out in the run and shoot. Eldridge in motion. Alonzo Washington gets the handoff and picks up a couple of yards up the middle. David Ortega made the stop for Cal. He'll hear that name all night long. He's a pro prospect. The backs and receivers for Arizona. Eldridge at halfback along with McGill. Washington at the fullback position. Hill at wide out and Mahalopoulos at tight end. Woods, Pritchard, Toffemeyer, Brandom, and Parker, the offensive line for Arizona. Second and seven out of the wishbone. Veal on a mix-up, keeps it, and lost a yard. Joe Nelms made the tackle for the California Golden Bears, helped out by Natu Tuatagaloa. What a great name, Natu Tau Tagaloa. He almost went untouched in that one. He penetrated. When you penetrate like he did, that causes a lot of things to happen sometimes, and most of the time it's a fumble. McGill in motion. And he overshoots Reggie McGill at the 33-yard line. Travis Oliver was covering on the play for the California Golden Bears. He's out of New Orleans, Louisiana, junior, six feet, 175 pounds. This is a tough throw because you're running to the to the left, and for a right-handed quarterback, it's a tough throw, and the ball just looked like it, t it got away from him and took off and fluttered. He was trying to take a little bit off. It took a little too much off, and it just floated on him. Brett Hawley, number 45, set to punt for Arizona. He averages 42 yards a punt. Vince Delgado deep for Cal. A booming punt, and it goes over Delgado's head, and it's rolling inside the 10-yard line. And it's down there by Arizona. And the crowd applauds that beautiful punt. 62 yards by Brett Holly. That's one yard short of his long this season that came against Oklahoma. 13-32 left. In the first quarter, no score. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. No score, first quarter. It's early. Troy Taylor, number 11. What a tremendous quarterback he is. 1,719 yards, 12 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Arizona is going to blitz a lot tonight. First and 10 from the 8-yard line for the California Golden Bears. Todd Powers, the fullback, and he gets up to the nine-yard line, brought down by outside linebacker Chris Singleton. Singleton has 73 tackles on the campaign, 33 of those unassisted. Offensively, Chris Richards at tailback, Powers at fullback, Mike Ford at the split-end position, Michael Smith, the flanker, and Ingram at tight end. Azine Anderson, Dos Remedios, Smith, and Zawatson, the offensive line for California. Split backs behind Taylor. Second and nine. On the draw, Chris Richards, and he gets out to the 11-yard line. Kevin Singleton, Chris Singleton's twin brother, made the stop. Arizona defensively coming off a fine effort against UCLA last week. Henke, Wells, and Reggie Johnson up front. The linebackers, Singleton and Alexander outside. Kevin Singleton and Darren Case inside. Secondary, Lewis, Burton, James DeBow, and Jeff Hammerschmidt. Third and seven for Cal. Razamala in motion. Taylor in trouble. He loves to scramble, and he gets it out to the 18-yard line, very close to a first down. Kevin Singleton makes his second tackle of the night. First down for the Golden Bears, so a big scramble that time by Taylor. Taylor. 
Once he decides to go, it doesn't take him very long to get going. And that time, that was a key run, picking up that first down. Delgado is wide right. Mike Ford, who has good speed, is wide left. Mod Power is the lone remaining back. On play action, intended for Ingram, incomplete. Jeff Hammerschmidt covered on the play for the Wildcats. Daryl Ingram, number 88, considered by Cal the top tight end in the conference. Here are some pretty good ones. Charles Arbuckle, Corwin Anthony of UCLA. Under 12 minutes to play, first quarter, no score, second and 10 for Cal at their own 18-yard line. Richards gets to the 20 and goes down. Kevin Singleton again in on the stop for Arizona. There's a flag on the play, and I think uh, one of the Cal receivers went down and threw a block on the Arizona defensive back, and it looked like there was a, maybe a little retaliation there, and the official threw a flag. We'll wait and see. The referee tonight is Bill Richardson. Dead ball, personal foul against the defense, automatic first down. So that puts Cal in pretty good field position. And I'm sure that Arizona head coach Dick Tomey not pleased with that at all. Yeah, that's just an emotional thing. Sometimes one of those receivers go down there. I guess some of these defensive backs don't feel that, that they should be blocking. And they throw, and usually they throw down low and they try to body block them. I and they don't like anybody around their knees. I, I don't blame them for that, but still you can't retaliate like that. First down at the Cal 36-yard line. Taylor, good protection, looking for his receiver, Brian Treggs, and Treggs falling down. It was over his head, incomplete. The Treggs had his man beat, uh, beaten on that one. There was very loose coverage, and he, when he made to make his cut, when he went to make his cut, I should say, uh, he just slipped as he tried to cross over. It's unfortunate because they would have had a good game. Troy Taylor, good size, 6'4", 185 pounds, a junior from Rancho Cordova, California. The year of the quarterback in the Pac-10. Second and 10, 11 minutes and 15 seconds remaining. First quarter, Cal and Arizona from Tucson, no score. Out of the I formation. Taylor, and he hits Michael Smith. Smith goes out at the 48-yard line. That'll be good for a first down. Todd Burden covering for the Wildcats. Yeah, very simple pass, and this was an audible. You can see here, uh, Troy goes back and it just takes about three steps and it's just about a, a five to six yard little sideline route and he audibleized to that because right before the audible, the receivers moved in about three or four yards to give themselves a little extra sideline. That gives Michael Smith, out of Oakland, California, a dozen catches on the campaign and another first down for Cal. They're at the 48 yard line and on the move, Taylor to put it up again. And he's going for all the marbles to Delgado. No good, and it was broken up by Todd Burden. Burden was with Vince Delgado, stride for stride. A nice job by Burden. It certainly was. Here you can see the ball is thrown a little bit too much at the inside. The coaches like that ball to be thrown over the outside shoulder so you can fade away from the defender. But, but Todd Burden really did a nice job, stayed with him stride for stride, and, and located the ball very well. Burden out of Riverside, California, a sophomore. Second and 10 from the 48 for Cal. Slot left, Rob Bimson in the slot for Cal. Powers and Richards in the backfield behind Taylor. And Richards gets the ball and he gets up to the line of scrimmage. And Dana Wells said, that's it. And boom, he goes down to the turf here at Arizona Stadium. Dana Wells is playing much better football in the last two or three weeks than he was early on, double teamed a lot. He is one of the finest nose guards in the Pac-10. He certainly is, and he's creating havoc in the middle. And right now, one of the things that the Bears are having trouble with is their interior line. And Dana could create havoc all night long. Delgado, wide right, Ford, wide left. Fazamala Tagaloa in the slot left and powers the lone remaining back. Taylor checking it off at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. 
The blitz is on, and it was blocked by James DeBow. James DeBow, the strong safety on the blitz. And Arizona, that's part of their game plan, and they executed it perfectly. Certainly was, and here you can see, the sa here he comes, James DeBow, and he really gets up in the air. Uh, he must be uh, a high jumper in, his off <laughs> in the offseason because he really got up. Both safeties were coming from both sides. And both of them were coming untouched. And, he, and uh, Ta, uh, Troy Taylor had to get rid of that ball quickly. Robbie Kane to do the punting. He's averaging 41.2 yards a punt. His long is 66 yards. He's a sophomore. Derek Hill, the deep man for Arizona. Hill averages only four and a half yards a return. Kane gets it away, and it's a beauty. Rolls into the end zone. Touchback. A 51-yard punt for Robbie King. Timeout here at Arizona Stadium. Ten minutes, nine seconds left. First quarter, Cal and Arizona, no score. We'll be back with more after these messages from your local cable station. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Well, while we were away, Arizona tried to run a play, but you didn't miss anything. Encroachment penalty against Cal. So a first and five from the 25 for Arizona. Out of the wishbone, Ronald Veal handling the offense for Arizona. No score, first quarter. On the option, the pitch goes to David Eldridge. And he crosses the 25 and gets out to the 26, 27-yard line. Brought down by Steve Hendrickson. Hendrickson, part of the fine defensive unit put out there by the California Golden Bears. Up front, not to Tua Tagaloa, the nose guard, Majet Whiteside, and Joe Nelms at left tackle. Linebackers, Dan Slavin, David Ortega, Hendrickson, and Dwayne Odom. In the secondary, Hardy and Oliver, the cornerbacks, Rod Inglis, the strong safety, and Darren Greer at free safety. Second and four from the 26 for Arizona. Reggie McGill gets out to the 28-yard line. Hendrickson again in on the stop. David Ortega was also there. Ortega leaves. Cal in tackles. Those two inside linebackers, David Ortega and Steve Hendrickson, are really having fine years. They're making a lot of tackles, but against a wishbone team, the inside backers have to make a lot of tackles because they have to do a lot of flowing to the ball. Arizona has a third and two from their own 28, just under nine minutes to play. First quarter, no score. Eldridge, he did not get the first down yardage. Stop at the 28. Now to Tua Tagaloa was there to make the tackle for California. Tua Tagaloa, 6'4", 265, a senior. Boy, he's picked up some weight in his career at Cal. Over 45 pounds since he came to Cal back in 1984. He certainly didn't look like he lost any quickness, though, because he caught that play from behind. There was a little mix-up because the Arizona people didn't get on the field until right before the snap, the two tight ends. Red Holly will attempt his second punt. Vince Delgado deep for Cal back at his own 24-yard line. Fair catch signaled for and made at the 25 where Cal will have it first and 10. 7.50 left first quarter, Cal and Arizona, no score. We'll be back after this. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. No score, Cal and Arizona, seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. I'm Jeff Witcher along with Tom Flores. Hope you're enjoying Pac-10 action from Tucson, Arizona. Ford in motion. Now Taylor rolling to his right. And Ford can't hold on at the 30-yard line. Kevin Singleton was over there. Del 
Delgado is sent wide right by Taylor. Ford now is wide to the left side. Powers and Richards in the backfield. On the draw, Chris Richards, and he runs into the Singleton Twins. Kevin Singleton, number 84, and Chris Singleton, number 87. Well, double from back with the tailback the other way pulling the off guard and tackle and the Singleton twins were there in force I we would like to take a moment to welcome our prime ticket network viewers joining us now no score Cal and Arizona with a little over seven minutes to play here in the first quarter third and ten for Cal from the 25 yard line Tagaloa in motion Taylor to throw and he drops it off underneath to Daryl Ingram, who gets it out to the 34-yard line. Short of first down yardage, brought down by Dana Wells of Arizona. He was looking down the field on this one, and the tight end, Ingram, had just checked and, and hesitated for a couple of seconds, and then he, he just drifted over the middle, caught the ball, and almost made the first down. He's a load to bring down. Ingram, who's done a tremendous job this season for Cal, as has... Derek Hill for Arizona. Robbie Keane to do the punting. Oh, it's a beauty. Backpedaling is Hill, takes it on his own seven. And he's tripped up. And a fumble. And Cal recovers inside the Arizona 15-yard line. David Wilson. It was a 59-yard punt. Well, here you see Derek Hill trying to outrun the coverage. It was a tremendous, it was a tremendous, uh, oh, well, I don't know if that was a fumble or not because the, the, the ball came squirting out when he hit the ground. And I don't know that it's, uh, the ground is supposed to cause a fumble. I question whether that was, a, that was a true fumble or not. No one's contesting it, though, so I guess it was. They're arguing about it. Well, we got penalty flags down at the 35-yard line. Wilson was the man who made the tackle that jarred the ball loose from Hill. Clipping against the kicking team. Penalized from the previous spot. Replay fourth down. Well, you can see there that that, that, that was a lucky that was a lucky penalty for Arizona. Because if it hadn't been and they were going to allow the fumble, which was questionable. Uh, then it would have been Cal's ball inside the 20. So the penalty goes against Cal, and they're going to kick it again. I'll tell you, the way this Robbie Keane is punting, uh, Jeff, uh, he's, a, he's a real weapon. I remember we had a guy named Ray Guy that we drafted in the first round, and he was a tremendous weapon for us for many years because we knew that anywhere on the field, he could punt that ball and put them back in their own territory. Robbie Keane, believe it or not, was a walk-on. But I don't have to tell you, he has earned a scholarship since then. He's also an ex-quarterback. Derek Hill now is at his own 38-yard line. Keane is inside his five. Six minutes and eight seconds remaining first quarter. A scoreless battle thus far between Cal and Arizona. Hill's going to let it bounce out of bounds, and they're going to spot it at the 20-yard line. Timeout here at Tucson, 5.58 left. First quarter, Cal nothing, Arizona nothing. We'll be back in a moment, but first these messages from your local cable station. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Has passed for 458 yards, three touchdowns, five interceptions, and what about this change so early in the ball game, Coach? Well, you, you wonder whether... You wonder whether there's an injury to, to Ronald Veal because uh, this is uh, very early. The game is still 0-0. Nothing's really happened or nothing's gone badly uh, to force him to take on Ronald Veal unless he's hurt. Waters was the starter for the first few games. He gives it to Art Greathouse who powers his way out to the 21-yard line. And he really had to work hard to get that yard. Tackle made by Joe Nelms, the left defensive tackle 
of the Golden Bears. Nelms out of Concord, California. He's uh, particularly effective against the run. Art Greathouse did not start this game. He has been bothered by a sore shoulder. He suffered that injury last weekend against UCLA. Troy Taylor has done a tremendous job for the Golden Bears. Second and nine from the 21-yard line. Out of the wishbone. On the option, now he pitches to Eldridge on the near side, and he's out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Here's a, the simple option to the left. Waters waits to the last minute and then just flips it out with the left hand. It's a nice job by Eldridge, and he he actually just runs out of bounds. That should have been a penalty right there. He was he was a good three yards out of bounds when when uh, contact was made. That's what the that's what the fans were booing about. Eldridge has done a, a beautiful job for Dick Tomey this season. First down from the 34-yard line. Run and shoot formation. Eldridge in motion. Washington, the lone remaining back. Waters looking for Great House, and he did not throw it well at all over the head of the intended receiver. Dan is Slavin covering for Cal. There you see Ronnie Veals on the sideline. He doesn't look too happy about being yanked, and doesn't look like there was any injury involved. So I guess, I guess uh, Dick Tomey just decided that he needed a change to, to get everything going. That last pass, actually, I, I think Bobby Waters was just throwing that ball away because the uh, Great House was covered. Second and 10. Kip Lewis wide left. Lewis makes the catch at the 43-yard line. And then it was dropped by right cornerback Travis Oliver. That was a this is a short side option pass. And I'll tell you what, right, right there, he really zipped this ball. Even though it wasn't a, a tight spiral, that ball got there really, really quick. Seventh catch of the season for Kip Lewis out of Mountain View, California. Brings up a third and one for Arizona at their own 43-yard line. Melvin Smith into the ball game for the Wildcats. A little over four minutes to play first quarter. The clock is ticking away. No score. Cal and Arizona. The Wildcats homecoming game. Alonzo Washington across midfield down at the Cal 49-yard line. First down, Arizona. Finally brought down by the free safety, Darren Greer. Greer, a 5'9", 190-pound junior. This is a nice run. It was a nice job of getting the ball off to Washington because uh, as he was handing off, Bobby Waters was being hit by, by Whiteside, the noseman who had really penetrated. Melvin Smith is wide right. Watch, you see Hulk coming? You see Hulk coming down the I don't see it. Eldridge gets the pitch, and he loses yardage. Out of bounds at the 48. Travis Oliver made the play for the Golden Bears. Fourth down by 21, Travis Oliver. David Eldridge is a local product from Tucson. 6'1", 200 in tacklers. And he has a couple of quarterback sacks. And we certainly hope that all that has happened is the wind was knocked out of it. Don't forget to join us next week, our Pac-10 Game of the Week. will emanate from the Coliseum in Los Angeles, California, as the undefeated USC Trojans atop the Pac-10 will host these California Golden Bears that will be Saturday, November 5th, 6.30 Eastern Time, 3.30 Pacific Time on most of our cable stations. And we have some great cable stations along our network. We had mentioned Prime Ticket out of Los Angeles that reaches Southern California, Hawaii, Las Vegas. Over 2 million folks along that network. Pass in Detroit. Sports Channel in New York. All you folks watching in New England. So Darren Case walks off the field under his own power. 
he either got the wind knocked out of him, which uh, it doesn't look like that was the kind of that they were they were administering any aid to that, or he got his bell rung a little bit. Maybe he just got knocked a little woozy. Second and four for the Bears at the Arizona 49-yard line. Play action. Taylor has time. Fires complete to Daryl Ingram. And Ingram is down at the 38-yard line. The tackle made by Arnold Mobley into the game, an inside linebacker. Mobley out of Dallas, Texas, and big Daryl Ingram. What a job he's done for Bruce Snyder this season. This is a good job up front with the play action, and Ingram just ran straight up the field as if he were going to the post and sat down in a hook. He had uh, Delgado running the post behind him to stretch that zone, and Taylor was right on the mark. Total yards in favor of Cal. Arizona has not done the, the job thus far, and Cal's defense certainly has. Taylor looking for Brian Dregs, and it's incomplete. Darrell Lewis covering. Can't say enough about the job that Lewis has done defensively for Arizona here in 1988. He played that one perfectly, Jeff. He he, uh, he sat, he, he, his back pedal was excellent. He never got out of his back pedal on that one. And, and, uh, and you'll see when Briggs makes his break, he makes the break right with him. And that ball, if it had been on the, if it had been right on target, I think Lewis might have got a piece of it. Troy Taylor has thrown at least one touchdown in 16 straight games. Dregs in motion. The pitch goes to Richards. And Lewis comes up to make the tackle. Gerald Lewis. He has become the Mr. October of the Arizona Wildcats. He certainly has. You know, he's making plays here left and right. He's making tackles. He's defending against the pass. And last week, Jeff, he, he also here you see the here you see the ball the uh, the runner is really is really strung out. Lewis comes up, makes a nice tackle. Last week he had a block punt against UCLA. So he's been, you're right, he's Mr. October. Third and ten for Cal. Big play for Taylor and the Golden Bears. Ford in motion far side. Taylor to Ford. He makes a nice catch, but he's short of a first down. Chris Singleton was covering on the play for the Wildcats. Well, Ford had gone in motion, and he ran a sideline route. The ball was perfectly thrown, and, and Singleton just got a hand on him and knocked him down. Otherwise, he would have had the first down. Now the big decision on whether to go for the field goal, which I guess they're going. They're going to go for the field goal rather than going for the first down. They are going to go for the field goal. It will be a 47-yard attempt. Robbie Keane is 13 of 15 this season. His long, 49 yards. Eight of his 13 makes have been from 40 or longer. It's up. It's good. Time out here at Arizona Stadium. Seven minutes and 22 seconds remaining here in the first half. And finally... Someone has gotten on the scoreboard. It's Cal. They lead it 3 to nothing. We'll have more after these messages from your local cable station. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. So California takes a 3 nothing lead on the 47-yard field goal by Robbie Keane, and what a tremendous college kicker this young man has turned out to be. There's no question. Number one is he's a punter. Number two, he's also the kicker. Very rarely do you see that any, nowadays where where the uh, the, uh, the player has a dual role. To do both as well as he's doing is quite remarkable. Chris Newton does the kicking off for Cal. Art Greathouse from his own one-yard line. He's tripped up, and he gets out to the 24-yard line. Castle Redmond, the man who tripped him up for California, a 22-yard return for Art Greathouse. Don't want to forget any of you folks along the Pac-10 network. Home Sports Entertainment, Houston, Texas, the Florida Sunshine Network. 
Sports Vision in Chicago. Glad to have you all aboard. Waters to Eldridge, and Eldridge gets it out to the 27-yard line. John Hardy was in on the stop. Steve Hendrickson, number 30, was also there. That was a pretty good spin by Bobby Waters on that on that option. Starts one way, spins back, comes the other way. I give you him a 9-9 nine, nine on that spin. At least a 9-9. Nine, nine. This is pretty good. Look at that. That's impressive. Then he comes. The only thing is he runs out of territory. The flip. And they're still able to pick up about three or four yards. About three yards. Second and seven out of the run and shoot. Alonzo Washington. And he gets out to the 33-yard line. Short of a first down, however, Steve Hendrickson again made the tackle. Bobby Waters seems to be pleased with the way things are going offensively. He took over on the third offensive series in the first quarter for the Wildcats. Kip Lewis into the ball game, replacing Melvin Smith for Arizona. Waters sends Lewis wide left. Derek Hill split out to the right side on third and two. Great house. David Ortega, the first man to hit Great House. And Arizona sends her punting team onto the field. This is just a straight power play to the right side off the tackle. The Cal Bears do an excellent job of jamming it up at the line of scrimmage. There's no movement at all by the line of scrimmage. Consequently, they didn't make it. So Brett Holly will do the punting. Just under 50-yard average tonight. Vince Delgado deep for Cal back inside his 25-yard line. And he backpedals to the 13-yard line. And he gets out close to the 20 before he goes down. A 44-yard punt. A 55-yard punt. A 55-yard punt. I beg your pardon. 536 left until halftime. Cal 3, Arizona nothing. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Back out here where two plays have been run while we were away, and we apologize for that. Here is the second play. Chris Richards getting back to the line of scrimmage at the 26 on the first play on a bootleg. Taylor got out to the 26-yard line. So it's third and four. Cal has the football and a 3-0 lead with a little over four minutes to play. First half. Taylor to Bimson, complete. First down at the 34-yard line. Zeno Alexander made the defensive play on Bimson. Well, there's Bobby Waters uh, talking to the coach upstairs, trying to get some instructions because so far they haven't they haven't penetrated into scoring territory, and they've got to they have to do this. Jeff, this this didn't appear at the onset to be. A, uh, the, the have the make is on a high scoring game anyway. Seven more first downs for Cal. Out of the I formation. Richards. A fumble. And I believe Arizona's got it. That's right. Pete Russell made the fumble recovery for the Arizona Wildcats. A big play. Well, the Bears were running the counter with the off-guard tackle pulling, and you can see there there's penetration in the backfield. And I, I can't tell, I can't tell who got the hand on the ball. Come on, let's go, let's go. But he did an excellent job. Knock the ball loose, and this is the first big break for Arizona. Waters, oh, he misses Eldridge, who is wide open. A quick look-in pattern, and he just let him a little bit too much. Waters is one of five passing for just nine yards. 
This is a very big game because both head coaches feel they still are in a run for a possible bowl invitation. Representatives are here from both the Holiday Bowl and the Freedom Bowl, so they're both very much wanting to win tonight's ball game. And Cal is winless in Pac-10 play. Waters to throw. He's got all night. Penalty flag, and Melvin Smith makes a catch. He's into the end zone, but hold everything. It might come back. It will come back. And the crowd hasn't found out yet. Now they have. Yeah, there's no question. That was excellent protection. And Waters has showed a lot of poise and patience in just holding and holding the ball in the pocket. But when the referee throws the flag, it can only mean one of two things. It's either roughing the passer or a holding penalty. And in this case, it's going to be a holding penalty against Arizona, which is unfortunate because this was the first big break they had on the fumble. Recovery, and now it's called back. Holding, offense, replay the down. Exactly four minutes, show on the clock. Three nothing in favor of the California Golden Bear. It'll be second and a 20 from the 44 for Arizona. That is the second touchdown pass that's been called back in this game. Reggie McGill, the man in motion for Arizona. Waters is going to run with it. He's got a lot of room. And he's inside the 35-yard line. Cornell Hallier made the stop for Cal. That was a nice call because uh, the Bears were were playing pass all the way, and they had it was only second down, so you've got two downs. You don't have to pick up all the yardage in one down, and they were able to pick up half of it on one play. Now it just comes up third and about nine, and they're in uh, they're in long field goal range, but at least they're in scoring territory. We've got a whistle blowing the play dead immediately. Too much time on that one, Jeff. Uh, the quarterback was audibleizing. Bobby Waters was audibleizing on that. There was a little confusion, and, and a couple of the players didn't hear it, and he had to repeat it again. And in, in doing so, they ran out of time. Offense. And now, uh, now it's a long third down situation. Five yard penalty against Arizona for illegal procedure. Arizona has been penalized 30 yards. Cal, 25. Third and 14 from the 38-yard line. That is Bart Rechtenwald, who had gone in motion. Now he stops on the right side. Waters looking for Rechtenwald, and he can't hold on as he was really hit. Incomplete. Darren Greer covering for Cal on the play. This would have been an excellent catch. The ball is it's a little wobbly. And just as he caught the ball, tried to catch the ball, he was really hit pretty well by Darren Greer. And a host of others. Yeah, he was like a pinball in that one. Doug Fapp will attempt a 55-yard field goal. He's 7 of 9. His long is 49 yards against Eastern Michigan. This one would shatter that. Out of the hold of Brett Holly. No good. It was off to the left. No good. Faf gave it all kinds of body English, and that didn't even help. But it was a nice effort. Well, it was certainly long enough. He had plenty of leg for it, but it just pushed off to the right a little bit. You know, this this game has turned into a uh, kind of a who's going to get the break last or who's going to get the best break. And in that case, you thought Arizona, because of the fumble recovery, had a chance to put some points on the board, but they didn't do it. So California maintains that 3-0 lead with three minutes remaining here in the first half. I want to remind you to stay with us at halftime. 
I have the privilege of interviewing the outstanding athletic director of the California Golden Bears, Dave Maggard. We'll also talk about some of the outstanding individual competitors in the Pac-10 this season. All of that at halftime. And also, don't forget our next telecast a week from today. USC, the only undefeated remaining in the Pac-10, will take on the California Golden Bears. That's next Saturday, the 5th of November, 6.30 Eastern Time, 3.30 Pacific Time, from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. And everybody here in Arizona knows all about Larry Smith, the head coach of USC in his second year there. So Cal, 4-3 and three overall, but 0-3 oh in Pac-10 play. Arizona also 4-3 and three overall, but they're 2-2 two and two in conference play. First and 10 for Cal at their own 38-yard line. And Troy Taylor is tripped up in his own backfield. It almost looked like uh, like the center stepped on him. That's uh, the reaction of Doug Pfaff attempting the 55-yard field goal. You would have thought this was a, a double overtime game <laughs> with that reaction, yeah. and he missed it. Yeah, I tell you, kickers are emotional. They sit around most of the game, and all of a sudden they're called upon to do something great. And if they don't do it, it's an emotional thing. Second and 14 for Cal Benson in motion near side. Todd Powers, the fullback, nice second effort, and he goes down at the 37-yard line. Reggie Johnson made the stop for Arizona. Haven't heard too much from Reggie tonight. He's a good one, a sophomore out of Dalton, Illinois. 6'4", 230 pounds. He's a tremendous pass rusher. Now, for, for the... For all the abuse this offensive line has been taken in the early part of this season, the, the Cal offensive line is doing pretty good. Here's another third down play for Cal. Dana Wells in pursuit of Taylor, and Taylor goes down at the 42-yard line. Wells was in pursuit. Chris Singleton was also there to make the tackle for Arizona. Well, Dana was in there very quickly, and, and uh, the Bears were moving the pocket, and they only started moving that pocket, Jeff, within the last couple of weeks. Here's the replay. You can see this is the sprint out. Dana Wells comes around, and he's putting pressure from the backside and doesn't allow Troy Taylor to break it up the field and pick up any yardage. Give credit to the Arizona defensive backs because there really wasn't anyone, anybody open down the field. Minute and a half left in this first half. Three nothing in favor of Cal. Of course, when you talk about Arizona and their win-loss record of four and three, you have to keep in mind that some of the teams they have lost to have been the top-rated teams in the nation. Last week they lost to UCLA, ranked number one. They lost to USC, ranked number three. And Oklahoma was ranked number four when it stopped Arizona earlier this season, 28 to 10. I'd say that's a pretty good group of people that they've lost to. And Bruce Snyder, the fine head coach at Cal in his second year, prior to that he was a running backs coach for the Los Angeles Rams of the NFL. He remains uh, the eternal optimist, figuring that nobody is giving Cal much of a chance in the next three or four weeks to defeat the opponents they have on their schedule, but he figures they can do it and still get to a bowl. That's right, and they're, they're optimistic about getting to a bowl if they go undefeated the rest of the way. Robbie Keane is back at his own 28-yard line to do the punting for Cal. Deep for Arizona, Derek Hill standing back at his own 10, and it was partially blocked. And then Slavin downs the football. Well, last week, as Tom Flores mentioned, Gerald Lewis blocked one against UCLA, and it was Donnie Salem who got a hand on that one off of the foot of Keene. Take a look. Well, this was a block all the way, and Donnie Salem just gets a piece of it. He almost got the whole, the whole ball, but he got a piece of it. Here you can see the penetration. This is the design block that the coaches probably saw during the week watching the films. 
And I'll tell you one thing about Dick Tomey, a uh, coach team, they, they really work hard on special teams to make things happen. First and 10 Arizona from their own 39 yard line. McGill in motion, far side, and Waters to throw. And he throws behind Derrick Hill, incomplete at midfield. David Ortega covering on the play for Cal. Well, you could, you'll, you'll see uh, number 77, Majet Whiteside. He's the one that's responsible for this pass going a little bit off target because he put the pressure on the backside on Bobby Waters and forced him to throw that ball a little bit off balance and a little bit a little quicker than he wanted to. Derek Hill bothered by an ankle injury most of this season. Reportedly, is back to 100%. And Waters still having problems through the air is just one of seven for nine yards, second and ten. Rechtenwald was the man in motion. Wide open is McGill. He makes the catch right near the first down marker, and he was hit and dropped immediately by Travis Oliver. This is a, a semi-sprint out, and he saw the receiver. The receiver was sitting right on the sideline. Did a nice job getting the ball to Reggie McGill, catching the ball, and they pick up the first down and stop the clock. That stops the clock with one minute and eight seconds remaining first half, and Arizona trying to catch up. It's 3-0 Cal. I'm Jeff Witcher along with Tom Flores. Hope you're enjoying our Pac-10 and Game of the Week presentation from Tucson, Arizona. Water is being chased by Joe Nelms, and he throws it, but Rechtenwald was out of bounds, so it's incomplete. Ron English was covering on the play for Cal. English, the strong safety. I'll tell you one thing, when you when you start spinning out like that and sprinting out to the right, to the left, and, and using that whole field, just like Bobby Waters is here, those big linemen, boy, you can you can get their tongues hanging out and they get a little tired chasing that quarterback all, all over the field. Bart Rechtenwald again in motion. Alonzo uh, Washington on the draw, but Cal was not fooled, and he gets it up to the line of scrimmage. Dan Slavin made a nice individual effort for California. They were coming on a blitz that time, and, and they, uh, they tried to run a quick hitting draw off the sprint action, and it just didn't work because Cal had too many guys coming in too many gaps. Now, now they call a timeout, see if they can regroup and see if they can pick up his first down and get some points here before the half. Now holding on to a 3-0 lead. That was a 47-yard Robbie Keane field goal. That's the difference with 47 seconds remaining first half. Coach, there's so much adjusting that has to be done once a football game starts. And there has been some adjusting in this game tonight, hasn't there? Yeah, there certainly has because... Number one, uh, I, I think uh, you know that Cal was preparing for Ronald Veal at quarterback. Now, all of a sudden, in the third series of the game, Bobby Waters comes in. So if they did their homework, they, they watched Bobby Waters, who hasn't played in two weeks. Uh, so they, they, they went back and picked up film from him, and they watched him last year. So they have a, a tendency on what he likes to do and what the style is and the personality of the team is when he's in the ballgame. 39 for Arizona, but they only have converted one of seven third down situation prior to this one. McGill in motion. Waters, great protection, and fires for McGill, and he was really belted by John Hardy. What a hit. Certainly was. John Hardy closed, really closed like a, like a lightning bolt on that one. Because Waters came back and he really had he had McGill open. He throws the ball, but Hardy out of the field. You can see here he really closed quickly, Holly makes a play, the forces the incompletion. Now it forces Arizona to punt. John Hardy out of Pasadena, California, a junior, six feet tall, 175 pounds, and so Holly is in there to punt again. What a job the punters from both schools have done in this one thus far tonight. Double deep men for Cal. Delgado along with Treggs. 
And this one goes over their head into the end zone for a touchback. 50 yard punt. A 50-yard punt by Holly. 33 seconds remaining first half. California three, Arizona nothing. And Ronald Veal, who had to get the job done immediately and did not, and he's watching from the sideline. You know, an interesting thing about this, Ronnie, Ronald Veal, I'm sure is very unhappy because they, they pulled him out after two series, but he is standing away from everybody else. He's almost he's like a, almost a lonely soldier out there. You'd think he would be at least close to the coaches so that he knows and stays in, in touch on what's going on and what players are being sent in the game. Taylor is 8 of 17, passing wise for 70 yards. Throws again, and it's complete to Tagaloa, who is out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Covering on the play for the Wildcats. Who else? Daryl Lewis. We mentioned Lewis as Mr. October. Coming into this game during this month, he had acquired 24 tackles, two interceptions. He stole the ball to set up a touchdown. He caused a fumble, and he blocked a punt. Not bad work for a month. What does he do for a uh, hobby? <laughs> <laughs> Second and two for Cal. Taylor's going to run with it. And he goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line after picking up a first down. I don't think they're going to take any chances right now. They might they might try to go deep, but I, I'm sure that the coach told uh, Troy Taylor that if it's not there, don't take any chances to try to force anything down the field and give Arizona any life because right now the momentum certainly is with the California Bears. Time remaining, lower right hand a portion of your screen. First and 10 Cal from their own 35. They lead it 3-0. Over the middle, Tagaloa's got it. Goes down at the 39 yard line. Now by 21 for Kasprichek. Kasprichek made the stop for Arizona. 17 seconds. Tagaloa came in, uh, came in motion on that one and then just came, just ran a little route, a little crossing pattern right over the middle. I believe they were trying to get him the ball underneath the zone and let him get as much as he could and then get out of bounds. But he, he couldn't get out of bounds and the Bears, uh, I believe, used a timeout. Asamala Tagaloa out of Torrance, a junior, 6'2", 195. Troy Taylor. He has six 250-yard-plus games in his career. And if you haven't heard, I don't know where you've been, but... UCLA was upset by Washington State at the Rose Bowl, 34-30. USC stayed unbeaten with a 41-20 lock over Oregon State. It was Arizona State maintaining their dominance over Oregon by one point and a three-point win, Washington over Stanford in Seattle. Halloween came early to Tucson. Second and six for Cal. Taylor is dumped for a loss. And a penalty flag goes down. Reggie Johnson was in on the... Taylor says, Coach, it's a face mask against them. 11 seconds showing on the clock. Face mask five yards against the defense. So an inadvertent face mask, a five-yard penalty as we take another look. Well, you have to see where, who has a face mask. It had to be one of the defense. Oh, I see what it was. It was on. Looks like it, Reggie Johnson. Yeah, it was Reggie Johnson pulling uh, Troy Taylor down by the face mask. It's a five-yard penalty. Puts him about the 45-yard line, and they got 11 seconds. And you can, theoretically, Jeff, you can get a pass off and out of bounds in about seven seconds. Uh, but the clock is running, so I think they're going to be. Nope. The clock started running. Now it's down to eight seconds, so I'm not sure whether it was supposed to run or not. They're going to discuss it right now, and if it wasn't, then they've got to uh, put about uh, three seconds back on that clock, give it back to, put it back to 11 seconds. seconds. California requested a charge timeout. That's number two. Well, the Bears had called for a timeout, and I guess they hadn't given it to them. Now they put three seconds back on the clock. 
At this point, what the Bears could try to do is possibly get a ball and get about maybe 20 yards and out of bounds and try for a field goal right, right uh, at the end of the half because uh, to get all the way down to the end zone would be pretty tough the way Arizona's playing. They're playing pretty deep right now, Joe. Of course, Arizona has scored in 187 consecutive games. That's the second longest scoring streak in NCAA history. UCLA has the longest streak at 201. The last time that Arizona was shut out, it was by their rival, Arizona State, 31-0. That was back in 1971, and Dick Tomey doesn't even want to think of that possibility right now. Troy Taylor steps up to his center, second and one. Dana Wells is after him, and Powers drops the football, and a penalty flag goes down. That stops the clock with seven seconds remaining in the first half. Well, that just about puts him out of uh, out of a chance to to get a field goal range with the penalty. Arizona, I'm not sure whether they're going to even accept the penalty at this point. Please, please. Holding. Offense, replay second down. And that's a good call because right now you look at it and, and uh, it was second down, so there was one more, there were two more downs left. So you might as well take the penalty and put them back even further and get them a little further out of field goal range. Uh, time is, is uh, ticking off the clock. There's seven seconds left. So they, right now, at this point, all they can do is, is try to get to the field, get down the field, and possibly come up with one of those, uh, you know, one of those uh, winging a prayer time kind of plays. Hail Mary time. So Taylor rolls left under some pressure, and he fires complete to Tagaloa. Darrell Lewis tackles him at the 48-yard line, and that is the end of the first half here in Tucson. The California Golden Bears leading Arizona's Wildcats three to nothing. A lot going on here at halftime, so don't go wandering off. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. We're at halftime here in Tucson, Arizona. California leading the Arizona Wildcats three to nothing. Believe it or not, although no touchdowns have been scored, there were a couple that were called back because of penalties, and the uh, referees split it right down the middle. One was called against Cal. This was the first touchdown was called back as Taylor goes long along the far sideline. This was a perfectly thrown pass. It was perfectly thrown right over the outside shoulder. Michael Smith makes an excellent catch, goes to the end zone for an apparent touchdown, but unfortunately somebody was holding and it went for naught, and that's, uh, that's a heartbreak. Now it's Arizona's turn to have one call back. And the guy who is going to make the catch is seven, Melvin Smith. Well, Melvin uh, Melvin caught a crossing pattern and just rushed in the end zone. I would, uh, wish he wouldn't point fingers like that because that comes back to haunt you sometimes. And that's unfortunate because Bobby Waters really isn't having that great a, of, a, of a night. And he needed that one to build up the confidence and to build up the team there. And that one was called back also. Well, Waters certainly isn't having a big night, and the stats favor Cal all the way. In first downs, they have nine more, 65 rushing yards compared to the Wildcats, 52. And in passing, they have 79 more. Total yardage, 164 for the Golden Bears, 72 for the Wildcats, each with a turnover. And the time of possession, also in favor of Cal, 17-32 to 12-28. I want to run down the other Pac-10 finals for you one more time. The big one, number one UCLA, upset by Washington State, 34-30. First Washington State victory at the Rose Bowl against UCLA. USC remains undefeated with a 21-point win in Corvallis against Oregon State. So the Trojans have won 17 in a row versus the Beavers, and they're now 8-0. Arizona State edges Oregon 21-20, so Oregon cannot shake the Sun Devil bugaboo. 
Three-point win for Washington over Stanford and Seattle. The, Sus the Huskies have won six straight versus the Cardinal and the Huskies. They've had a rough year, but they're five and three. So we've got USC in sole possession of first place, five and zero. Oh, UCLA with their first loss. Oregon at three and two, and Arizona and Arizona State at 500. Washington, Washington State, one game under 500. Then Stanford and Oregon State with one three and one records, and Cal, the only team without a Pac-10 win, and they're hoping to change that tonight. They're in the basement, 0 oh and three. And as we mentioned, there are representatives here tonight from the Holiday Bowl and the Freedom Bowl. And Tom Flores, Bruce Schneider, has said that he still feels confident that if his team can win their next three or four ball games, they could still go to a bowl. Yeah, I think they certainly uh, they certainly have that that opportunity, and I think it speaks highly of both of these teams that the bowl committees or members of the bowl committees are here tonight uh, looking at them and, and seeing what kind of prospects they would be for bowls because one of the things when you take a team that might end up with an eight and three or seven and four record you want to make sure that team represents the bowl well and it's an exciting team to watch and, and has a good following and there are certainly a, a handful of teams from the pac-10 that could end up going to a bowl I certainly think so, and you, you look at this Cal team, and even though they've only scored three points, that they have an exciting, an exciting player in Troy Taylor. Just Troy Taylor alone is enough to uh, to uh, invite a lot of people and a lot of uh, response and a lot of following. So as we get ready for the second half kickoff, Arizona will be kicking off. Dick Tommy walking up and down to the far sideline. John Knees, number 28 to kick off. Jaron Greer and Basamala Tagaloa, the deep people for Cal. And Tagaloa is going to run it back. Breaks one tackle, gets outside. And Darrell Lewis stops him at the 35 yard line. A 35-yard return by Fasamala Tagaloa and a tremendous individual effort after bobbling the ball in the end zone. That certainly was a great effort. You watch here, and usually if you bobble in the end zone, I think really he should have kept that ball in the end zone. He did not have to return it. He took a chance and almost was tackled on about the 15-yard line, but it's just a tremendous effort on his part to get the ball out to the, thir to the 31, 32-yard line. His longest kickoff return of the year right there at 35 yards. He's in motion. Taylor to throw, and it's off the fingertips of Todd Powers, the fullback. Although a little bit high from up here, it appeared catchable. It certainly was catchable, and it was off a play-action pass, and they really haven't thrown to Todd Powers that much tonight, and he has been, in past games, one of their top receivers coming out of backfield. That's right. In fact, he is second on the club in receptions. Nick Tomey, two years at Arizona. Prior to that, he was a coach at Hawaii. On the draw, Richards. And he's upended, and a penalty flag goes down. At the 38-yard line, James DeBoe made the tackle for the Wildcats. I think that's going to be a holding penalty. It looked like it was a holding penalty on, uh, on Kevin Singleton. Somebody ended up tackling him. There you see Dick Tomey, a uh, Jeff, who's motioning to take the penalty, put him back. And now let me show you something. All the way down here, all the way, walking in the back, of, there he is, standing with his headgear on, is the quarterback, Ronald Veal, who was taken out after only two series. So uh, I'm sure he's a little dejected, but I would think that he would still be over there, close to the offensive coaches, so that when the, when the plays are going in, he stays in contact with what, what's going on in the game. A dejected young man right now, a little disappointed, but listen, he's only a sophomore. He's got a lot of a lot of playing time left. Right, not a previous punt. 
let me ask you this, Tom. If you're a coach on the sideline and you see uh, a young man reacting like that, you could also say, well, the heck with him. I'm not going to use him the rest of the ball game. No, I don't think so. I don't think you would want to do that. I think you'd say, you know, you'd go over to him and say, listen, Ronnie, I know you're disappointed, or have somebody in the system come over, get back in this ball game. You might, you might still be back in the ball game, but you know, it's not over. Second and 20 for Cal. Split back. Pimpson in motion. Richards, and he gets a couple of yards, and that's it. Kevin Singleton was in on the stop. Brad Henke also there for the Wildcats. Well, Kevin Singleton is having a pretty good day. He's made he's made quite a few tackles. I just wonder if, if when he and his brother hit somebody, if the if the player doesn't think he's seen double sometimes, you know, with those twins. No doubt about it. Rich uh, Gropenbacher has a, a neck injury. Chris Wright. A pinch nerve, both out for the rest of this game. Third and 15 for Cal. And a whistle immediately. It looks like someone on the defensive line of Arizona jumped too soon. May have been Dana Wells. Dana says, Not me. No, I didn't do it. <laughs> Never. Hey, listen, don't ever admit it. Except when you come back and, uh, and you watch the film. You know, and during the game, you swear to the coach, I didn't do it, coach. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. And all of a sudden, you come back, and right there, it's on the film. And, and uh, the room is not big enough for you to hide. Here, we'll see it. And you you would think that the nose man, and I don't know why they, that ball was snapped before there was any contact. So I don't know why they blew the whistle. That, that play should have continued. Mike Ford is wide left. Tagaloa in the slot right. He comes in motion. And Mike Smith is wide right. Under pressure, Taylor oh. fires, but Smith was down on the ground when the ball was thrown, and Todd Burton was covering on the play. There was a lot of contact. In fact, they ran into each other. They both went down into the ground. I was waiting for a flag, but it was never thrown. No, I guess not. I guess it was just uh, what they call uh, accidental contact or incidental contact or, or contact that doesn't matter. <laughs> Robbie Kane is in to do the punting for Cal. 13 minutes and 13 seconds remaining third quarter, 3-0. California leading Arizona. Derek Hill is the deep man for the Wildcats. Oh, what a great bounce. What a great bounce. And it rolls dead at the four and a half yard line. 12 minutes, 59 seconds left on a 62 yard punt. Back after this, you're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. One of the finest uh, combination kickers in the country, Robbie King. He certainly is, and, and you can see he has excellent form. He's got good extension here, great concentration, and the drop is very important. And you can see the follow through. He doesn't really follow through as high as he normally does. But what a weapon he is. Here's a 61 yard kick. He gets an excellent bounce. And with a weapon like Robbie King, you can really help your defensive team by keeping the other team backed up almost the entire game. Out of Orange Vale, California, backed up against their own goal is Arizona at the four and a half yard line. Bobby Waters will try to get him out of this predicament. Wishbone formation, a fumble by Waters. And David Eldridge recovers it nicely for the Wildcats. Well, you wonder whether Bobby Waters is a little rusty from not having played for a couple of weeks. Just watch it change here. You can't really see whether he gets it or not. But that exchange between the center and the quarterback is cannot can never be taken automatically because it is so vital. And I've seen I've seen it happen so many times. They mess up the staff, and all of a sudden, the other team has the ball. And look what they would have it inside the five. Arizona has a fine center, one of the best in the conference, and Joe Toffelmeyer. McGill, second man through, gets it out to the seven-yard line. Joe Nelms in on the tackle for California. Ronald Beal. All he can do is watch from the Arizona sideline. Third 
third and seven for the Wildcats. And they have been atrocious on third down conversions up to now. Waters is going to run it. He's got a lot of room. A nice spin move, and he's got the first down as he's tackled at the 19-yard line. Darren Greer brought him down, and the crowd applauds the effort by Bobby Waters. Well, that was another one of those spin moves, except this time he was going up the field with it. Here he takes off. It's a designed quarterback draw. Excellent spin move right there and picks up the extra first down. I give him a 10 on that one. Excellent. On the option. Now the pitch to Eldridge, and he's out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Odom. Hardy in pursuit. Well, you're wondering on this one if Bobby Waters was ever going to pitch out. He almost ran out of out of bounds on the pitch out. He didn't. He didn't really give. He didn't really give Eldridge much much room to turn it up the field. Here's a here's a nice on the quarterback. And what here's what he sees as he runs down the field. A nice little pitch. Second down and six. McGill. McGill turns the corner, and he's got the first down at the 31-yard line. Cornell Collier finally brought him down, but not before he picked up another Arizona first down. That was, this was all speed because by all rights, McGill should have been caught right here for no gain or, if anything, for a loss. You see right here, he just turns on his feet and picks up as much as he can. And, and really, this was, an, this was an outstanding effort in picking up the first down because he's running on the sideline and he just leans forward. What an effort. Three first downs in the first half for Arizona. They have two on this current drive. Waters, and he gets out to the 34-yard line. Cornell Collier, David Ortega combined on the stop for California. Waters looking over at the bench. He transferred from SMU in the fall of 1987 after the NCAA shut down the Mustangs program. Waters, rushing-wise, has 24 yards on four carries. This is second and seven for Arizona at their own 34. Alonzo Washington, and he gets it out to the 38-39 yard line. Alonzo's been banged up. Steve Hendrickson and Dan Slavin in on the stop for the California Golden Bears. Of course, if you're a football player, you've got to be able to play with a little bit of pain because you're going to get banged up sooner or later. You certainly do. You have to play with a little aches and pains as long as they're not going to hurt you. It hurt your future or put you out indefinitely, but the little aches and pains are part of the game. Dick Tomey against Cal is 0-0-1. Snyder has the same record against Arizona. Oh, Eldridge really got jolted. What a hit. David Ortega really rung Eldridge's bell on that play. Well, you can see what a great hit by Ortega here. Eldridge was just going to try to go over the top, and he was caught before he could get off the ground. Right here, Otega came over the top and met him first before he could get over the top. That is a that is a pro bowl type hit. That's why he's a pro prospect. Brett Holly to do the punting from his own 25 yard line. Delgado deep for Cal. Holly's done a great job of punting tonight. Delgado at his own 13-yard line, does some sidestepping, and he gets it out to the 18 or 19-yard line. Timeout here in Tucson, 8.52 left, third quarter. Our score remains Cal 3, Arizona nothing. More after these messages from your local cable station. You're watching the pack. Brad Hinkey made the tackle for Arizona. 
Arizona, all of a sudden, coach, tightening up defensively. They certainly are. In fact, there was no pen there was excellent penetration by the defense. You can see there on that one, uh, Jim Jenkins was bent in the backfield and bounced backwards. Brad Henke and Dana Wells really did a nice job in penetration that time and just shoving the offensive line of Cal backwards. Second and 21. Tagaloa in motion. Taylor and Ingram can't hold on to it a little bit high. Normally, Ingram doesn't drop that pass. Darren Case covering on the play. He had excellent protection on that on that one. And as a whole, tonight, the California line that has been a little porous in the pa in past weeks has given uh, Troy Taylor some pretty good protection. That time, he had excellent protection. The Arizona team called a defensive audible when they when they saw uh, Tegaloa go in motion. Third down and 21 for Cal. Taylor's going to run with it. Puts his head down and he crosses the 15 up to the 17-yard line. Kevin Singleton made the stop for the Wildcats, and it's a punting situation for the Golden Bears as we take one more look. This is something that the Bears have started doing the last couple of weeks, moving that pocket just to give Troy Taylor a little bit extra room. That time there wasn't anybody available to throw the ball to, so he just tucked it and ran to get as much as he could. Give, give this great punter, Robbie Keane, a little bit of room to punt. Derek Hill deep, Keane ready to kick for Cal. This is his fifth punt of this ball game. Cal holding on to a 3-0 lead, 6.57 remaining here in the third quarter. Fair catch signaled for and made by Hill at the 41-yard line, so the Wildcats in pretty good field position. 42-yard punt, no return. 6.51 left, third quarter, Cal 3, Arizona nothing. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. So that Arizona scoring streak in jeopardy for the second week in a row, they just did get some points on the board last weekend, a field goal with less than a minute remaining against UCLA. So Arizona has scored only three points in the last six quarters of action. There is six minutes and 51 seconds remaining here in the third quarter, and they have yet to score tonight. It's 3 nothing Cal. First and 10, Arizona at their own 41-yard line. Waters on the option. He keeps it. And he gets out to the 48-yard line. Nice run by Waters. Not to Tua Tagaloa in on the stop. Well, there was a little crease, and Bobby Waters saw the crease, and he actually fumbled that ball. He fumbled that ball and was able to get it, to grab it back when he was on the ground. You see it here, Flop, and he got a real lucky bounce on that one. He showed great concentration in keeping that football. Alonzo Washington up the middle for big yardage. And he's out to the 42, 43 yard line of Cal. And an Arizona first down. Travis Oliver finally tripped him up. Troy Taylor talking over offensive strategy. That's when Cal gets the football. He's a junior. What a tremendous career he's had, and it's not over yet. Bobby Waters has Arizona on the move. First and 10 at the Cal 43-yard line. Under six minutes to play. Third quarter out of the wishbone. And Waters is tripped up for a loss. Steve Hendrickson made the play for Cal. You know, when they run that option, they're running down the line. They always have those big defensive linemen just swinging at him, grabbing at him, snorting and running. Uh, you have to be a special kind of guy, special kind of quarterback to run that option. At that time, Majet Whiteside uh, was penetrating. Well, you can't really see him there. But you can see those guys just trying to grab their ankles and grab them all the time. The ball draws the crowd. Second and 11. Waters. Swings it out to McGill down the far sideline, and he gets it to the 38-yard line before he goes out of bounds. Cornell Collier was there to knock him out of bounds, and Steve Hendrickson also in on the play. 
That's a very safe little pass to throw. They were flooding the area trying to get something downfield. There was nothing there. Just pop it off to McGill and let him run for what he can get. They picked up about three or four yards. Cal cheerleaders trying to keep the people that have made the trip here to Tucson from California in good spirits. Their team is leading 3-0. A little over five minutes to play. Third quarter, Eldridge in motion. The rush is on, and they nail him. Not to Tua Tagaloa comes up with a quarterback sack. He came into this game tonight, third in tackles with 44. Not to Tua Tagaloa. Well, you can see there that the California defensive line was was just teeing off. They were coming hard. They were penetrating all the way. And not to penetrated very well. Got a piece of it and knocked it down. There was nowhere for nowhere for Bobby Waters to run. So Holly in to do the punting. Brian Treggs and Delgado deep for Cal. Holly really hunches over when he gets that snap. A very high punt. And Arizona trying desperately to touch it before it went into the end zone. Couldn't do it. 41-yard punt. Timeout here in Tucson. 4-12 left, third quarter. It remains 3-0 Cal. More after these messages from your local cable station. Troy Taylor, the number three passer in Cal history tonight. 11 of 23 for 99 yards. Not one of his outstanding performances, but we have to give credit to the Arizona defense. They've done a nice job. They certainly have. They've done a nice job. Both defenses have played very well tonight. 3 0 Cal, 4 12 left, third quarter. First and 10 from the 20 for the Golden Bears out of the I formation. That's Ford in motion. On play action, Taylor flips it out to Todd Powers. And he gets it to the 23, 24 yard line, brought down by James DeBow and Donnie Salem. Well, they haven't run that run too often tonight. That's a counter, the counter play off the I formation, and then they have the pass that comes right off of it. And that was a misdirection pass, throwing it to Powers in the flat. They just haven't thrown him the ball that much that night, as much as they'd like to. But, but like you said, Jeff, uh, you give credit to the Arizona defense for keeping Cal out of the rhythm of their game. Second and seven from the 23. Taylor almost had it intercepted right to James DeBow, and he did not hold on. Well, Christmas came a little too early that time, and he wasn't ready for it. You can see here, he's back, Taylor's back, and I don't even think the receiver was looking for the ball soon enough, and it hit the ball right in the, right in the wrong spot. Tagaloa, the intended That's receiver, right. hadn't even turned around yet. And the ball saw it all the way. There's no excuse for dropping that ball. That would have been a big, big play for Arizona. That'll keep him awake tonight. Unless Arizona can come back and win this football game, plenty of time for them to do it. Taylor, and Dana Wells has it by the jersey. Oh, the crowd loved that. Big Dana Wells. Oh, Dana, you can see Dana Wells battling Steve Anderson there, and he just wins the battle, gets a hold of the quarterback, Troy Taylor, and then does a little dance. He was Mark voted the, uh, the, top, <laughs> the top defensive lineman in the Pac-10 last year, Dana Wells. Yeah, he certainly has been playing better than in recent weeks of the night. That was a big sack for them. Robbie Keane from his own end zone. And you can bet Arizona will be coming to block it. He gets it off. Derek Hill backpedaling. Takes it at his own 40. And he couldn't get outside. Derek Taylor made the play on him. A 46-yard punt, a two-yard return. Nice punt coverage by the California Golden Bears. You, you, when you think of the punters, you know, the distance isn't the only thing, Jeff. It's the hang time that's very important. And that time, that ball punted by Robbie King was up there for a good four, four and a half seconds, and that enabled the, the coverage team to get down. Both 
both Robbie Keane and, and Brett Holly have had an excellent night, and I agree with you. I think right now they're probably the most valuable players of this game. They're keeping both defenses uh, uh, on top. They're keeping both offenses on their side of the ball. On their Numbers side. on Keane. Just fine, thank you. First and 10 from the 42 for Arizona. Water steps up over the middle. Melvin Smith, oh, oh, oh. and there's a penalty flag. Pass interference and an outstanding call, an easy call to make. The official was right there. Travis Oliver. Well, that time, that time you could see that the the, uh, the receiver was, he really had him beaten. And uh, there was nothing he could do but reach out and grab him. Right here, you see that. Right here, there's a there's a hand That's going on the uh, <laughs> defense. 15 yards and uh, all. That down. I don't even know he, if he could have caught that ball. Had, had he not had, been had, held, right, I think it, it would have been possible. It would have been possible. It sure, it certainly would have because Melvin Smith certainly has enough speed to turn on that next that extra gear to get to the ball. If that was the NFL, that ball would be down there on about the 20-yard line. But the college rule is. Is, uh, is one that's very popular, and a lot of the NFL teams would like to have the college interference rule. Penalty yards a factor in this one. First and 10 from the 43 of Cal for Arizona. Waters to McGill. And McGill inside the 40 where Ron English tackles him out of bounds. Ron English from Pomona, California, a sophomore who weighs in at 200 pounds. He stands 6'2". He's still developing his skills as a football player. Boy, he almost, he almost uh, reached down and grabbed that face mask. He grabbed him by the helmet. I guess he figured he better tackle him high, otherwise he'd get away from him. Gain of five, second and five for Arizona. Alonzo Washington, and he gets down to the 35-yard line. Dan Slavin, David Ortega, in on the tackle for California. The official attendance has been announced tonight at 47,182. Arizona Stadium holds 55,197, and many of them here tonight having a lot of fun. One minute, 42 seconds remaining, third quarter, a third and two. David Eldridge inside the 30. He's got more than enough. For the Wildcat first down, and the crowd loving it. Well, that's any third down is important, but especially those third and three situations, third and two situations, because that's when you really have to show some power. And that time, Arizona did show the power. Double tight end set for Arizona. Out of the I formation, Eldridge. Cuts back inside, and he's down at the 16-yard line. Brought down by Ron English of the California Golden Bears. Well, Arizona on third down was in a two-tight end with a look, with a wingback situation out of the eye formation and ran the power play to the right side, and then they came back, and kept the same personnel in, and just and stayed with their power game. This time, it was great block, and this time, Eldridge was there, able to break outside and pick up the extra yards for another first down. Eldridge again, runs into his blocker, and he loses yardage. Nelms made the stop. He ran into the right tackle, Glenn Parker. Time running out here in the third quarter as Arizona is on the move, threatening as Cal still leads 3-zip. Arizona has Dave Borland in there at one of the tight ends. He normally is a third string center. Charge timeout. And the other tight end is 83, George Mahalopoulos. And Waters, with the timeout, will talk it over on the Arizona sideline. Yeah, California was a little confused there on defense as, as to what they wanted or what personnel they wanted in the ball game, and they called a timeout. And that really helps the offense, too, because that saves a timeout for Arizona and enables them to go and discuss what they want to do because this is really a crucial part of the field, uh, Jeff. You, you, you never want to go away from here without a score, 
And at this point, Arizona needs a touchdown. They don't need a field goal. They need a touchdown. Well, the California road trip continues next week. You'll see them again on our Pac-10 Game of the Week. They'll travel to Los Angeles and take on the undefeated USC Trojans, who are in sole possession of first place now in the Pac-10 with the upset of UCLA by Washington State today. That will be on November the 5th. We certainly invite you to tune in 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.30 Pacific Time on our Pac-10 Game of the Week. So Arizona using different people on the run. Eldridge has gained 37 yards. Alonzo Washington, 40 yards. Waters has rushed for 29 yards himself. And Reggie McGill, 18 yards. And they have moved the football. It's second and 10 on the Cal 16-yard line. 35 seconds left, third quarter. Eldridge, he's got blocking ahead of him. And he dives to the 14-yard line of Cal. And Travis Oliver was there to make sure he stayed down. That time there was a nice block made by the by the offensive left guard, John Brandon, did a nice job in pulling and, and making a nice cut block to enable to enable uh, the the uh, running back uh, to uh, pick up an extra yard or two. Eldridge out, Bart Rechtenwald into the ball game for Arizona. They're th three of twelve on third down conversion. That's the end of the third quarter. The score remains a California Golden Bears three, Arizona nothing. We'll have the final 15 minutes in a moment. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Well, the Arizona mascot, Wilbur the Wildcat, making sure that the crowd stays fired up because their Wildcats are on the move. We begin the final quarter of action. Cal three, Arizona nothing. But Arizona is at the Cal 15-yard line, third and nine. Rechtenwald's going to throw it. Derek Hill, touchdown, Arizona. his second touchdown pass of the season from Bart Rechtenwald of all people some razzle dazzle and Arizona is on the scoreboard Doug Pfaff to attempt the PAT out of the hold of Brett Holly. it's good so the scoring drought ends and with 14.55 remaining in this football game, Arizona leads for the first time 7-3. to three. And their scoring streak is still intact as they have scored in 188 consecutive games, the second longest streak in NCAA history. What? Here's the option. It's the option run. And, and where did Brecken Wall come from? He hasn't played much all night if any and he and he runs it perfectly Hill ran a perfect corner route makes an excellent catch and takes a little bow he should take a, a bow that was a great catch right on his finger that certainly was and that's you know he, he we haven't heard much of Gary Hill all night but that one uh, makes may, kind of makes up for it at this point because the way Arizona is playing defense and the way Cal's playing defense this might this could possibly be the final score seven to three and of course, you're talking about one of the top, if not the top receiver in the Pac-10, and he showed why in a clutch situation, he comes through and makes the big play. That's right. That, that's what you have to have. You really have to have that kind of a, that kind of execution and those types of players to win big games. Make great players make big plays. Took two and a half minutes to travel 58 yards for Arizona. Seven plays, and Rickton Wald throws the touchdown pass to Gary Hill. 15 yards. 7-3, Arizona. John Knees kicks off. And 
it's out of bounds. And that means they'll have to kick it again from five yards back, the 30-yard line. So Coach Wall, with that touchdown pass, has more than one of the starting quarterbacks, the man who started the game tonight, Ronald Veal, who has yet to throw one. How about that? That's right, and that uh, that's one of those plays that you work on and you work on it, and you hope that at some point in the ball game you're going to be able to do it. And they stuck Wall in there, and, and I'm sure California was aware that he was in there, but they probably weren't sure exactly what he was going to do, and they found out the hard way. Dick Tomey knew that this was going to be a very tough game against Cal. Hey, come on, he has a great deal of respect for Troy Taylor, rightfully so. So Knees will do it again. Deep for Cal is number five, Doug Parrish, and number 80, Basamala Tagaloa. Tagaloa was on the left of your screen a moment ago. Tagaloa from the one-yard line. And he gets out to the 22-yard line. Donnie Salem made the stop. A nice 21-yard return for Tagaloa. But did you see Travis Oliver go flying through the air there? I don't know if you saw him on the screen. That He was just a blur. He, the wedge was coming, and he just took a dive and, and went flying right over there. <laughs> he didn't. He, he caught nothing but air, but it was kind of impressive. I gave him a bite of eight and a half for that one. Eight and a half. Eight and a half, yeah. First and ten, Cal trailing now, seven to three just under 15 minutes left in this football game. Brian Treg out of Carson in motion. Chris Richards cuts it back, and he gets out to the 24-yard line. Darren Case was there to make the stop for Arizona. There you see him. See him diving over. Wow. I mean, I might have to increase that to about a 9.5. That was Travis Oliver on just trying to get over the top and make something happen. Chris Richards, 30 yards tonight on 13 carries. He came in averaging 4.7 yards a carry. <laughs> on play action, Taylor treads wide open at the 40-yard line. And he's brought down by Todd Burton immediately. And Treggs has hurt an ankle. He's limping. Brought down by Todd Burton. Well, Treggs had run up, he pushed up the field and run a sideline pattern. A nice tackle there, but still he picks up about 15 yards for the first down, but hobbles off. He's hobbling a little bit, and uh, hopefully he'll be all right and be back in the ballgame. They're attending to him right there. There's a position right there. Hurt his right ankle. Michael Smith has replaced him. And now Smith comes in motion. Todd Powers out to the 44-yard line. Kevin Singleton made the tackle for Arizona. Yankee also in on the play. You see Steve Anderson, one of the offensive guards, uh, hobbling off the field that time, too. That's going to hurt California because they're pretty thin in the offensive line already. He was, he was a left offensive guard. Second and seven from the 44 for California. Slot right, Tagaloa. Bimson is wide to the right. Taylor. And it's intercepted by Burton down the near sideline. No, out of bounds back at the 46-yard line. No touchdown. He stepped out of bounds back at the 46, and Burton doesn't know it yet, but he'll find out shortly. He stepped out of bounds, and they're uh, they're a little upset about it on the sideline. They feel that maybe he didn't step out of bounds, but that ball was bobbled by Tagaloa, and Burton just picked it up out of the air and threw it down the sideline. But he stepped out of bounds, and they're calling it back. Here you see the play. It was a it was simple, a little short out pattern. Tagaloa goes right through his hands up in the air, and there's Burton right there on the spot. And you can see right where he shuffled his feet. That's where he stepped out of bounds. First interception of the campaign for Todd Burton. 
Burden, 6'1", 182 pound, a sophomore from Riverside, California. Another look from a different angle. You can see here, Tagaloa just took his took his eyes off the ball, and Burden right here, you can, you'll see right there. Well, I don't know, I'm not sure. That was hard to tell whether he did step out of bounds or not. From that angle, I couldn't see that he did step out of bounds. Alonzo Washington picks up a couple of yards. Brought down by Dwayne Odom. Alonzo Washington, he's banged up, has a bad tooth. He's well, out of... Uh, let's look at that one more time and see if he really did step out of bounds. He, he has the ball there. There's his left foot. There's his right foot toe. I don't think he did. I don't think he did step out of bounds. Well, our, our, right there, he's blocked out from our view. If it happened, it happened right there. Second and seven from the 43. Alonzo Washington gets it out to the 40-yard line. This is a great opportunity for Arizona to do, to uh, to make something happen in this game and and just turn the, the momentum and, and momentum on their up to their to their level and shut the door on Cal because uh, that was a big turnover for Arizona. Washington 46 yards on 11 carries tonight. He's out of East St. Louis, Illinois. Third down and four for the Wildcats. Waters has plenty of time going long for Hill, and he overshoots him. John Hardy covering on the play. That'll bring up fourth down, and the crowd wanted a pass interference and didn't get it. They certainly do. They want, they, they're begging a little bit. Hill had run kind of a stutter step and go on the sideline, and it looked like he might have had a step on him, and it looked like there might have been a little bumping down the field, but the official's right on top of it. And there's no harm, no foul. That's what we call incidental bumping. That's incidental bumping. And, uh, and it's okay to do. It's okay to do if you're the defensive team or the defensive coach. If you're the offensive coach, it's not okay to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends on what side of the line you're on. Holly is standing at his own of 45. He's done a magnificent job hunting tonight. Look at him as he... Almost looks like he's going to lurch forward. Waits for the snap and gets another dandy off. Delgado makes the catch, the fair catch at the 14-yard line. 7-3, Arizona leading Cal with 11.26 left of the game. Back after these messages from your local cable station. Eleven minutes and 26 seconds left in this Pac-10 game. Arizona seven, Cal three. You can see there the uh, the offensive line of the Arizona team going over some of the stunts that they're uh, that they're looking at or that they're seeing from Cal or possibly going over a play that they're going to be trying to execute in the next series. Taylor is 13 of 27 for 119 yards tonight, one interception. First and ten from the 14-yard line. Todd Powers, and he gets out to the 15-yard line. Todd Powers, grabbed by 21, Paul Kasprachek. Paul Kasprachek made the tackle for Arizona. A simple little pitch to Powers to the left side, to the tight end side. They had three wide receivers in the ball game, and there just wasn't anything there. The one thing, Cal is, Cal is not really a running team. They, they haven't uh, moved the ball consistently on the ground. They're they're basically a passing team, so they've got to get that ball in the air. Second and nine, Taylor streak of touchdown passes in consecutive games is in the jeopardy. He's thrown one in at least 16 straight games. Ingram can't make the catch, and Jeff Hammerschmidt did a nice job covering on the play. Ingram ran a deep out pattern, kind of almost like a short corner pattern where he pushes up the field and tries to find a seam behind the zone. But that time, uh, Jeff Hammerschmidt picked him up and played him man-to-man -man off the play action. Played him very well. Taylor getting the play from Michael Smith. California is 4 of 13 in third down situations. It's third and nine from the 15.
Taylor breaks a couple of tackles, and he gets out to the 19-yard line, well short of a first down. Chris Singleton in on the stop for Arizona. And the Wildcats defense does the job, and the crowd responds. A disappointed Troy Taylor comes off, and Robbie Keane will punt from his five-yard line. Derek Taylor deep for Arizona. Under 10 minutes left in this football game, Arizona leading 7-3 over Cal. Bounces out of bounds at the Arizona 43-yard line. 9.45 left in this football game. Arizona by four. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Back here in Tucson, Arizona, I'm Jeff Witcher along with Tom Flores, and what a great football game you have been able to watch with us tonight. It's 7-3, Arizona leading Cal with nine minutes and 45 seconds left. Cal, with the field goal, the 47-yarder by Keene, led for much of the game, 3-0, and Arizona scored right at the outset of the quarter to take its only lead, 7-3, as they have the football now at their own 43-yard line, out of the wishbone. Waters to the 46, and a penalty flag down. David Ortega in on the tackle for California. Ortega's nickname is The Shark. He got that in high school because he is such a tremendous hitter. <laughs> I can see why. He's, he's certainly all over the field. And as a middle linebacker, you have to be in, involved in the action all the time. Offense, first and 20. That's a big penalty against Arizona right now because they really don't need that. They need to get, they need to have some consistency in a drive here and use up some of this, some of the clock. And instead of uh, first and 20, you know, they need to come up with second and five, second and four. Those are the situations that you like to, to have. But this game has not been an offensive game. It's been a defensive game on both sides. Kip Lewis wide left. Hill wide right. McGill in motion. Waters getting pressure. Fires to Alonzo Washington. He's got some room along the far sideline. And he crashes down to the 44-yard line of Cal. David Ortega finally made the tackle. A 23-yard pickup for Arizona's Alonzo Washington. This was a design screen off a little short sprint out. He throws it right over the right over the, uh, the center of the ball. And you can see him running here. Excellent running. Oh, you better buckle up if you're gonna if you're gonna try to tackle him. Little little uh, well, that was a little faster motion there. Waters pitches to Washington, Rumble! California recovers David Ortega. That guy again, David Ortega, he seems to be everywhere. That time, I don't think, I don't think Washington ever had control of the ball. He was bobbing that ball just as he got hit. And you can see this, the mad scramble there. When that ball's in the ground, it, it, uh, it really cre creates chaos. There were four or five bears there, and it was the, the fourth or fifth one, Ortega, who got the that's, football. That's right. All those other guys were running. Ortega said, here, I'm going to get it. Back with you guys. First and 10 Cal at their own 34-yard line. Let's see if they can capitalize on the Arizona turnover. Richard. Big yardage. He's out to the 44-yard line. Jeff Hammerschmidt made the solo tackle for the Wildcats. That might be the best run of Richards all night. They haven't had too many yards on the ground. And as, as we've said all along, in fact, both sides of uh, both offenses have not had have not had too many uh, yards on the ground. Here, watching the umpire. Oh, the umpire got clipped. They should have thrown a flag. Play action, going long for He's Delgado. Got He's, got He's got it. Touchdown, California. And that quiet.
quiets the 47,000 plus here at Arizona Stadium. A big 55 yard touchdown pass and the Cal fans who made the trip really enjoying it. Well, that's what they were waiting for. They kept waiting the whole game and, and for three quarters that, uh, that passing game that we've been hearing about was kind of dormant and all of a sudden, Troy Taylor hits uh, Delgado on a beautiful post pattern, and the guy that he beat was Darrell Lewis, who was an outstanding corner. Bobby Keane to attempt the PAT. And it's good. So a timeout here at Arizona Stadium. The clock showing eight minutes and 21 seconds left in the game, and Cal back out in front by three. We'll have more after these messages from your local cable station. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Chris Noonan set the kick off, Bart Rechtenwald and Derek Hill deep as Cal has taken a 10-7 lead. That 55-yard touchdown pass, the longest of the season by Troy Taylor. Rechtenwald from the one-yard line. And he gets it out to the 35-yard line, a 34-yard return by Rechtenwald. And remember, it was Rechtenwald who threw the touchdown pass for Arizona at the start of the fourth quarter. And here's a California touchdown. It was off a play pass, and you can see there, Troy Taylor just spread back and threw it as, almost as far as he can. Maybe he could throw it farther, but he threw it right on the money to Delgado. He caught it right in stride. A little jubilation in the end zone. First and 10 from the 35 for Arizona. Out of the run and shoot, McGill in motion. Waters to throw. And at the 50-yard line, a magnificent catch by Derek Hill. Tackled by Jared Greer. That play good for 16 yards. That's why Derek Hill is considered one of the best, if not the best, in the Pac-10 because he comes up with big catches, and that's what they need right now. First and 10, Arizona at midfield. Out of the wishbone now. Alonzo Washington down at the 45-yard line. A penalty flag is thrown. David Ortega. And it was Ortega who recovered that fumble. And then we asked, how long would it take or would Cal capitalize? And it took them just two plays to travel 66 yards for the score. Well, when you have a guy back there that has a gun like Taylor, uh, they can strike from anywhere on the field. And he's got a, he has an excellent group of receivers, uh, Ortega being one of them. And then they have that the nice receiver with a funny name. Bazamala Tagaloa. That's right. <laughs> I love that name. I can't say it, but I love that name. Oh, this isn't good for Arizona. 15 yarder. 15 yard penalty, first and 25. And Arizona 35. So Arizona puts themselves in a hole, first and 25 from their own 35. Seven minutes, 35 seconds left in the game. A three-point lead for Cal. It has been a dandy tonight from Arizona Stadium. Waters looking for Hill, and Hill can't hold on. And Ortega took him down anyway. Ortega was looking for him on that one. They, they've run this pattern before, and, uh, and they, they sprint out one way and then try to hit Derek Hill coming back from the weak side of the formation. Here you'll see... Waters spinning out to his left, and Hill would have run a pattern coming in from the right side, but they were waiting for him that time, and that's the kind of passes that wide receivers don't like quarterbacks for. Kip Lewis is wide left, Hill wide right. Eldridge in motion. Waters under pressure, and he goes down, and penalty flags all over the field. I think every flag that's available is out. There were at least three flags thrown. Joe Nelms and Dwayne Odom there. We may have a face mask. 
If it's a face mask on Cal, that's uh, certainly unnecessary at this point, especially since they have Arizona backed up. Let's watch it again because they, they get uh, Waters here. Against the defense, automatic first down. Well, Dwayne Odom on that one slapped that up and came down and, and had, got his hand caught in the face mask and pulled him down. That's a 15-yard penalty. That's a costly 15-yard penalty because that's an automatic first down. 15-yard penalty on the face mask. First down. That's really costly because, Jeff, instead of second down and about 25, now they're first and 10 at the 50-yard line. Cal has been penalized 95 yards on eight penalties. First and 10 Arizona at the Cal 49. Alonzo Washington, and he picks up about three yards. He gets it out to the 46-yard line. Joe Nelms made the stop for Cal. And all the while, Ron Veal stands in pretty much the same location, dejectedly watching from the Arizona sideline. Yeah, from his vantage point, I think you can see, you can probably see what the signals are that are sent in, if there, if there are any signals. But if they're sent in by a messenger, then he really can't see it. And they really should be over there by that coach. But that's, uh, you know, that's uh, his choice, I guess. Second and seven for the Arizona Wildcats. McGill makes the catch at the 30-yard line. First down, Arizona. Ron English made the tackle for California. 16-yard pass completion for Taylor. Her check down, Waters. This is a little half roll to the left, and McGill had run a pattern up the field and breaking to the sideline. Makes an excellent catch, and the throw is right on the money. That's probably the best throw that Bobby Waters has, has made tonight. A little over six minutes to play in this football game. First and ten from the 31-yard line. On the draw, Washington. Great run by Washington. He's inside the Cal 20-yard line. Dwayne Odom finally brought him down. Well, this Arizona offense has come to life all of a sudden. And I think that that uh, that uh, big penalty kind of sparked them a little bit. Here you see Washington on a misdirection draw with a sprint out fake to the right, running a draw back to the left. But once again, you look back on that big face pass penalty, and that was a key, key play in this drive to keep it alive. First down, Arizona, Washington, a big night, 73 yards. Washington runs into Majette Whiteside and Joe Nelms. Joe Nelms, a great baseball career, was cut short. He was a pitcher. Bruce Snyder on the Cal sideline, but he suffered a rotator cuff injury. He had been drafted out of high school by the Philadelphia Phillies, but he went the football route. He had to be an awesome sight on the mound. 6'5", 265-pound pitcher. You bet. Second and 10. Mario Hampton into the game for Arizona, and he's the ball carrier. Picks up a couple of yards. David Ortega, Dan Slavin, Joe Nelms all there for California. I think Dick Tomey is chewing that gum a little faster right now, Jim. Arizona. Arizona has called a timeout. That stops the clock with four minutes and 44 seconds left in the game. And California holding on to that three-point lead. We'll be back to Tucson in a moment. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Well, the Arizona offense has certainly awakened here in the second half. They have converted four of 14 third down tries in the ball game, three of six here in the second half. And they're in a third and eight situation at the Cal 17 right now. for Washington but the pressure was on incomplete and it brings up fourth down 
And into the ball game comes a field goal kicker, Doug Pfaff. He will try to tie it up. This is certainly well within Pfaff's range, as long as a 49-yarder. This will be a 35-yard attempt. No good. He missed it. So Doug Pfaff misses a 35-yard field goal attempt. That's pretty unusual for that young man because he's had, he's had a pretty good career or a pretty good year as of date. And to miss a 35-yarder, which is almost a almost a chip shot. Here you'll see Fab as they watch the ball. There's a lot of body English that these kickers usually use in trying to help. Usually when the ball is marginal or when it's going Going astray, the, the body English gets a little greater. He came into this game four of five from 40 to 49 yards, and so it is very surprising that he did not make that one. Chris Richards picks up a couple of yards up to the 22 before Kevin Singleton and Darren Case brought him down. Vince Delgado, end of the game for Cal, brings the play to quarterback Troy Taylor. There's the story. 10-7, Cal leading. Cal looking for their first conference win of 1988. Yeah! Play action. Taylor to Powers. And Powers dives and goes out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Jeff Hammersmith, Darren Case there for Arizona. Todd Powers, a senior, 6'2", 230 pounds. He's a P.E. major. And he's a fine all-around football player. He runs well, an outstanding blocker, and he's one of their top receivers. He certainly is, and, and they haven't, even though they haven't thrown him that, uh, that much tonight, those, that pass is the kind of passes they like to hit him with to pick up little chunks of yards. In that case, it's a big first down. Chris Richards, and he gets it out to the 38-yard line. He was brought down there by Chris Singleton. He did a nice job blocking on Dana Wells in that play because that was the key to the success of that play. They had to double down on him, and they blocked him out and put him on the ground. That gave, that gave uh, Chris Richards some running room to pick up a good six yards. And anytime you get five yards or better on first down, you really are in control. That'll bring up a second and three for Cal at their own 38-yard line. A little over three minutes left in this game. Todd Powers gets maybe a yard before he was dropped by Kevin Singleton and Derek Case. Dick Tomey, the concern on his face is obvious. Time running out for Arizona. They're down by three, two minutes and 47 seconds left on the clock, and it is ticking. When you look at that clock and you're behind and you want to get that ball back, it seems like that clock is going 100 miles an hour. On the other side of the ball, on the other side of the field, it seems like it's going too slow. Cal has not converted a third down situation in this half. They're 0 for 4. Taylor runs, and he didn't make it. He gets it out to the 41-yard line, but I don't believe he made it. The tackle made by Dana Wells of Arizona helped out by Chris Singleton. That was a one-man pattern. Tegaloa had gone in motion, and he ran a, one, a little sideline route. And it was either run or pass here off the play action. It was either run or pass for Troy Taylor, and it looked like he decided to run all the way. Robbie Keane sent in to do the putting, so Arizona will get the football back, unless they try a fake in this situation, which I don't anticipate. Derek Hill, the lone deep man for Arizona. And a penalty flag.
Ten. Delay a game. Offense. Fourth down. That really shouldn't bother. Uh, that really shouldn't bother Cal with with Robbie Keane punting. Another five yards at midfield isn't going to bother him because he can punt it. He can still put it inside the 20 from where from where he's punting from. Keane, number 10. Arizona has not had any great returns this year. Hill has averaged just four and a half yards of return. He'd like to break one right here. Another great punt by Keane. Hill from the 16-yard line. And he crosses out to the 28, 29-yard line, tackled there by Dan Slavin. A 47-yard punt, and Hill returned it seven yards. One minute, 31 seconds left in the game. Plenty of time for Arizona to pull out a victory, but... It won't be easy. Arizona had the block on again that time, and, and when you go for the block, you sacrifice on the return. But Arizona has blocked a bunch of kicks. In fact, they've blocked in the last seven years, I think they've blocked about 50 kicks. Bobby Water has been in there since the first quarter, taking over for Villa. That's got it down. Dwayne Odom, an incompleted forward pass is the ruling. And he had nothing but grass in front of him. I don't know why he didn't just take off and run. Obviously, he saw somebody open here. He breaks it down. And look at here, right here, you can see Odom reaches out and grabs his hand. But there was no one in front of Bobby Waters for at least 20, 25 yards if he had taken off and run with the ball. Dwayne Odom has good size and fine athletic ability, and he shows it off right there. Here it is right here, and I, and I question whether that arm was going forward. I think that arm, I think at that point that arm was just starting back. That might have, that should have been called a fumble. I agree with have. you. Waters to throw, looking for a hill. No good, broken up by Ron English. In fact, English was out in front of Hill to the last moment. Broken up by 42, Ron English. Waters had to throw that ball perhaps a little sooner because he was feeling the pressure. Yeah, he was feeling some pressure from behind, and that's one of those balls that you throw up there, and you hope that your receiver makes a great catch because he's not, he's not clearly wide open. Waters, 6 of 19, 82 yards, one interception. Here is the biggest third down play in the ball game for Arizona. Waters to McGill, and it is complete at the 42-yard line. Travis Oliver covering for California. First down, Arizona. Well, Waters showed us something on that pass because he, he sprinted out a half sprint to the right side and then throws it all the way across the field to McGill to pick up the first down. He showed us a little zip there. They're in their two-minute offense now. Eldridge in motion. And the pass is batted down, incomplete. Dan Slavin batted it in the air. Nice play by Slavin. Incomplete, broken up by Dan Slavin, number 41. That stops the clock with 59 seconds. You can see right there, was, the ball was, was tipped just a little bit. At that point, it's anybody's ball. There's no interference. Once the ball is tipped, the interference is off. English had knocked down Eldridge. Otherwise, Eldridge had a shot at catching that ball after it was deflected. He certainly did. Second and ten, Arizona from their own 42-yard line. Can they pull it out? On the draw, Hampton. He's out of bounds, penalty flag. Flag, and he went out of bounds. Penalty flag, and it appears that it will go against Arizona. That's right, a holding call on the Wildcats. Fifty-three seconds left on the clock. Here, here's Hampton as he's running with the ball, trying to pick up the first down. And you can see Kip Lewis. Offense. They called it on Replay Kip Lewis, who was blocking right in front of Hampton, right on the sideline. 
trying to help him make that first down, but un unfortunately, it goes back, and now it's second down and 10. California trailing in this series by one game. If they hold on to this victory, we'll tie it up at four, four, and two. Second and nine. Waters looking for a hill and a penalty flag. Ron English got in front of him and Hill has re-injured that ankle that has bothered him all season long. I think that's going to be on the offense, so I think that will be on Derek Hill because it looked like he was pushing the defender. I think you're absolutely right. Dick yep. Tomey getting an explanation from one of the officials. Not too happy, I, I would assume. Uh, who would be happy at this point because all of a sudden you have two penalties back to back. This one could cost them a down. Offense, lost it down. Let's watch it again as, as Derek is running straight up the field. The ball is put... The ball is actually thrown pretty well, but Derek has to go through a defender to get to the ball. You can see right here he pushes him. There's a lot of pushing that goes on right there, and, and uh, they called it on Derek. Plus, he injured his ankle a little bit. 89 yards and penalties for Arizona. Third and 23 from the 29-yard line. Waters going for Melvin Smith, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth and long. Well, fourth down and long with less than a minute. They've got. They have to go for it. They have no choice. They can't. They can't put it. They can't uh, punt it away. California, 41 seconds away from their first Pac-10 win of 1988. At this point, uh, Jeff, Arizona, they call the timeout. They, they've got to, they have to, they have to think about picking up the first down. It's a long first down, and unfortunately, because of penalties, they put themselves in this position. They just kind of fell apart a little bit. There hasn't been really a dominant offense on the field tonight on either side. On either side, it's been a good defensive battle all the way, 10 to 7. We felt it was going to be a low-scoring game, but uh, uh, I thought I thought really it would be a little bit higher than this. I thought it'd be maybe 24, 17, something like that. And out of the 17 points on the board right now, 14 have come in this final quarter of play. You'd have to say that mistakes uh, have been one of the reasons for the low-scoring game because there were two touchdowns that were called back, one for either side. You have, you know, Jeff, this, this Pac-10 is really a, a pretty well-balanced league. And when you think about the number one team in the nation today got, got beaten by Washington State, which is a fine football team, but really not a great defensive team. But they just... Uh, they did a number on, on the UCLA Bruins, and, and here Cal is, is on the verge of winning their first Pac-10 football game, and they're a pretty good football team. Of course, if you're Arizona, you think back to Todd Burton's interception when they called him out of bounds, and on our replay, he was blocked out for a moment, but up until then, he had not stepped out of bounds, and I know they'll be looking at that at the game films. Derek Hill makes the catch, and he goes down right at the 42-yard line. Well short of the first down, and Cal will take over on down as the defense celebrates. Well, there'll be some happy bears on the, on the plane uh, home to Berkeley tonight. 33 seconds left, Jeff. All, and, uh, and Arizona only has one timeout left, so actually, Cal, all they have to do is drop on the ball uh, two times and the ball game is over. And unfortunately for Arizona, they have had problems in recent years in their homecoming game, and this one, no exception tonight. Dick Tomey fit to be tied as Cal, with 33 seconds left, will just eat up the clock. Taylor goes down on one knee. And tempers flaring, as you would expect, and a penalty flag thrown. The frustration being shown by Arizona. Yeah, this is what part of the game where, where obviously 
the game is over unless you really mess up on, on the exchange. That's what the defense is hoping for. Second down. But that offensive 25. line, you know, the offensive line comes up and they say, okay, okay, don't, you know, I, I know this is the way that, that we used to do it. They'd come up and they'd tell the defensive line, just cool it, guys. Don't, don't take any cheap shots. The game's over. We're just going to drop on it and forget it. And once in a while, you get an overzealous guy, and he uh, he says, heck with you, I'm going to get my last shot in. The penalty marched off against the offense, California. Second and 25. That'll bring up a second and 25 for Cal. The ball at their own 43-yard line. 28 I seconds left. I can remember one game where the New York Giants were running out the clock. Instead of dropping on a knee, they ran a play. They fumbled, and the Philadelphia Eagles, Herman Edwards picked it up and went for a touchdown. They lost the game. Coach got fired. Coach should have got fired. <laughs> Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen seconds. And the clock stops with fifteen. Strikes timeout, Arizona. Another timeout. Goes to Arizona. So Arizona's record will dip to five hundred overall. Four and four, and they will go to two and three in Pac-10 play. And Cal moves up to five and three and one and three in conference. And so Bruce Snyder has to be very pleased with this win and figures that if they can continue to win in the remaining weeks, they have a legitimate shot at being invited to a postseason bowl game. And that possibility seems extremely remote for Arizona after this loss tonight. And again, Taylor goes down on one knee. You can see the jubilation on the face of Bruce Snyder. He's tickled, and well, he should be. Dick Tomey, the class act that he is, comes over to shake the hand of Cal players, assistant coaches, and now the head coach, Bruce Snyder. The gun has sounded. It's all over here in Tucson, Arizona, where the California Golden Bears win an unexpected conference game, their first of the season, a 10-7 decision over the Arizona Wildcats. We'll be back to Tucson in a moment. You're watching 10 Game of the Week.